Hey everybody, this is Dark Guards, and we're back with another video. So we're going to do a really quick, short tutorial on how to do the Particle Accelerator. So let me go ahead and get a new world set up here. I'll show you guys kind of how it's done. Now keep in mind this will change eventually, so it won't be set in stone for all parts. Uh, the core part of at least the tube setup and the laser will probably stay about the same. It's only going to be the collection unit that might change to a little bit more than what we are currently going to show here. So for this, you're going to want to get some tubes. So you're going to need at least accelerator tubes. I'm not going to tell you how many you're going to need because it's going to take a little bit of figuring out on your part what you exactly want to build and how you're going to want to build it. It doesn't really matter exactly where you build this, so it's not dependent on location. It's not dependent on altitude height, obviously. That wouldn't make sense if it was. And it's not really dependent on size as much as people are going to probably think it is. Now the original particle accelerator, for those who are familiar with it, used to be a big tube. And it was highly dependent on the shape and size on how it worked. This one, not so much. Anyways, you do want to probably set up some basic shape with it, but it doesn't have to be overly thought through. When placing the tubes, though, the tubes will place based on what side you try to click. So if you place, click on that side, it'll place that way. If you click here, it'll click that way. If you place in the center, it will try to match your facing orientation. So it does give some options on placement. When you do place them, the orientation by which you place them does matter, and at the order of which you place them also does matter. So if you want to make a corner, you're going to need to place them like this, and then do that. Otherwise, if you do it this way, it's going to turn into a split. So let's get a basic shape going here. When building it, you are going to want to plan out kind of where you're going to have your entrance and exit into the tubes. It doesn't have to be built in such a way that you have a what would normally be a particle center which is a big uh kind of circle way to play about it but it is one of the more effective designs because it gives you quite a few options on how you can handle it because if you don't end up accelerating on the first leap you can try to get on the second one and so on and so on go ahead and get these placed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just build the circle and i'm going to think of how i'm going to build the Exits and entrances here. Yeah, so we'll probably exit off of this side. So let me go ahead and change this out. So what we'll do... Yeah, we'll create our entrance here. And we'll create our exit here. So that'll give us our basic setup here. And then what we'll do is we'll put our entry over here. And the exit over here. Now the point of the entries and exits is really just a programmable way to determine where you actually want this to enter and exit. It doesn't really do anything more than that. So in theory we could have done it in any different way, but this will work. For the entry side, we're going to want to set up a few different things here. So let me go ahead and clear off a few of these and try to build this in a more of a logical order. I'll probably definitely end up redoing this tutorial later just to make it a little easier to understand what's going on. So for the entry side, we're going to need an item holder. This is what's going to hold whatever we're going to accelerate. And then we're going to, behind this, we're going to want to put the laser. The laser does follow the same placement properties. So if you place it like that, it'll place like that, and depending on what side of the block you click on. Uh, the laser does support facing up. This right now doesn't really do anything, but is there for later purposes. And then the boosters are the same exact way. Depending on what direction you place them, it's where they actually it will end up placing in the direction. Uh, with the boosters, it doesn't matter kind of what direction they're facing, at least as long as they're in the same axis with each other. So you can place them like this, which I tend to do because it looks a lot nicer. But you can place them in other ways. As well with these ones, because these ones will face up as well. If you click on the corner, it'll face this way. If you click on the center, it'll face the other way, making it a little bit quicker build style. The lasers will do the same exact thing. And that gets us our setup here, and then you're going to need some kind of power source. I'm going to go ahead and grab a creative cube from Mechanism. It will be the quickest way to get this set up. Uh, you're going to want some kind of power source. You'll have to do a best judge of what that needs to be. Uh, and so I don't have actual calculations on the power usage of stuff. But that'll get it powered. You can connect this to any side of these boosters, so it doesn't really matter where it's connected. Visually, it looks the best at the end. But these will pass power over to the laser, and will allow the laser to get ready to fire. To actually fire the laser, you can use an individual button, or a lever, or whatever. It's activated via redstone, and then we'll fire that way. Very simplistic on that. You then want to just do a hopper, kind of, to do that here. 
And I need to adjust my frame rate here. I just looked in the top corner and noticed my frame rate sitting on unlimited. So we're doing like 400 frames, 500 frames, and was causing the item in the middle to spin. This animation is dependent on your frame rate, so if it spins faster and slower, that's why. I actually need to eventually get around to fixing that. We'll get that, and then you need to stick some kind of items in here to actually get it to accelerate. I'm going to go ahead and get myself a creative cache. So go ahead and get a cache. And then we'll get a creative upgrade for it. Now obviously what you would want to do is do something like an ME system, so applied energetics, uh, refined storage, or just even build craft pipes. It doesn't really matter what you do, but you're going to want to feed this in some practical way. And yeah, we're just going to feed it with creative upgrades because why not? <laughs> Let me actually get it to be some kind of sensible block here. There we go. So the item holder itself will only hold one item at a time. This is by design. These can be used for decorative display too. They're actually really nice for that. So if you want to do something like put a block in there, it'll rotate nice and slowly. It's really, really cool for that. But these are actually used for primarily this purpose. So you fire a laser off here, it'll actually shoot the accelerator system. And then you're going to want to put a one on the other end here. So for your exit system, let me get a level it out just a little bit here. You could put this anywhere as long as it's within five blocks. So put it like right there, works perfectly fine. You're also going to want to put two lasers on it. The lasers have about the same distance on it. The lasers will need to be set up in a different mode, so it's kind of important to pay attention and actually make sure you are setting these up right. So by default, lasers will be in laser mode. After all, they're going to be working with that. You'll need to flip them over to field projection mode, which you do via lapis. And then these will again need to be powered by boosters. The more boosters you attach to this, the more power it's going to insert. So for this basic laser, it just increases kind of how much of an energy push you give into the particle. Right now, it's not as big of a deal. In the future, it's going to be a much more larger and more uh, kind of more necessary to put more boosters on there, more power and everything else to get more of a push into the accelerator. But that'll be for future crafting and things where you start doing things like crafting red matter rather than crafting antimatter. By default, the recipes are going to be all antimatter based. So put these over here and let me go get another creative cube. These guys do eat quite a bit of power, because the whole entire idea is you're going to be capturing particles with these. What this does is transfers power into this, so that way this has power in order to catch the particle. If it doesn't have enough power, the particle will explode. It won't do damage at the moment, but we may add can fix that later. Again, what you're going to want to also do with these is you're going to want to power these guys. So you can use just about anything as long as it powers the laser. So redstone blocks are a good option. That'll then project that in there, so that should work. You then are going to want to find a way to pull items off of it and put items into it. Now I recommend using basically what's built into the mod which are called connection relays for the moment because in the future this may be changed to be a required option where you have to actually do this. Uh, connection for how these work is a bit finicky when you go to place them so you kind of have to think ahead when you go to place them. This will be improved over time. So right now, how this is built is it will try to connect to that the first available. So you may have to place it a couple times to get it to place properly. But you're going to want to run these a bit of a distance away, depending on how far you want to make them go. So let me go ahead and do it this way. And if you hold down shift, it will invert the placement. Same thing works on all of this stuff. If you hold down shift, it will invert placement. So get this over here, and then we'll do one more, and that should be a good enough distance. And then what we're going to do is we want to get some kind of tank going. I'm going to use the thermal expansion ones because I think the mechanism ones do not support inserting from the bottom. And then we're going to do upgrades on this one. Any tank should work, and if you want you can even put pipes on the other side of this, it should work just fine. How these connection relays are set up is they'll pass uh, the connection from this all the way around here. That could be any kind of connection, that could be electrical, fluid, inner, could be, yeah, anything. So if you want to use these to relay all kinds of stuff, what they're actually are also built for is if you guys want to utilize these machines here but are having problems connecting to them, these are perfect for dealing with that. Get a lot of connection there. But we'll get that guy and I'm going to put another one here so if we fill that one up pretty quick, we can switch it out. So I'll do that side and then we want to do the top of this as well. The whole idea behind um, using connection relays is they're kind of a little bit of blast resistance, I believe I set them up that'd be that way. So they won't explode as quickly. So you want to go ahead and get a little bit of distance between that and then set up your input into that, which could just be a hopper. Now if you notice on these, these do have arrows. Arrows do point to the connection path, so this will pass its connection to this guy. This guy will pass its connection to this guy and so on and so on. They are programmed to be super simplistic, so they're not built like wires. They do not do a really complicated networking system. 
they simply act more closer to hoppers and that they identify the connection and then we'll go is like hey do you have a connection this guy will then go hey do you have a connection and we'll keep passing along until it eventually finds its connection point there is some built-in capability to prevent infinite looping so if you try to loop these on each other it won't do anything however if you try to interact with another mod that offers a similar feature to this you may run into issues with it uh, there is some plans to do some changes to the forge itself to prevent that um, but we'll get a hopper and we'll get a cache so we get some items I put in here. And if I can place this without failing 15 times. So get that on that side. And I kind of want to use something different on this side. So we'll use Rainy more. Just to give it a bit of an aesthetic difference. So what this will do is it'll pass this connection down. You can already see we have some lapis in there because it passed it down. But as soon as we pull that out, it'll start replacing. And let me go ahead and change the time of day. Keep roll. That way we won't turn it on us. So we've got the entrance set up, we got the exit set up. So we got those parts done. The next step is we need to put the magnets in between. Now it's really up to you how many magnets you want to put around here and how you stack them and how you build your tube or whatever you want. One big thing with the tubes is, as I said, you don't have to build it this way. So if you decide you want to build, be like really creative with your designs and you want to get like a whole bunch of wiggles going around, you can fully do this. I built these specifically to make sure you guys can be as creative as possible with your designs and are not limited by it being built a certain way or a certain shape. So we'll show this off by doing this here. And we'll go ahead and put some magnets there. One thing with the magnets though, you can only have magnet attached to one tube at a time. You cannot stack them on top of multiple tubes, but it only checks in the same axis. So if you want to go ahead and make this whole row magnets, you can fully do that. The magnets can also be stacked as far as you want, so you can go as far back as you want. The only problem is you do have to power them, so keep that in mind when you actually do build this. This will be improved in the future by allowing the tubes themselves to do power. If you see the tooltip on them, it does say that. That's not an implemented feature at the moment. I'm going to get those done, and I'm going to leave the side exposed as well. In order to get these to work, you are going to want to upgrade these to be powered tubes. Now just click them with redstone, it should work. They'll turn green to say that they're going to accelerate and give you a little bit of an arrow acceleration there. That is a good indicator that they're going to accelerate. There's also an additional feature you can use for the moment. This will not always be this way. We will probably make a dedicated block for this in the future. But you can also put this on the side, type the word speed in, and this will now identify it with the speed of the particle going through it as soon as it passes through it. So we're going to put this on here to show you how it accelerates. And I also want to put one here because one of the other parts of making this work is if you set this up by default right now, the way it is, Particles would randomly go left, right, left, right. Well, not randomly, it would go left, right, left, right until it basically runs out of particles to go. To control that so you don't always get the particles ejecting like that, you need to put a particle detector over top of it, which looks very similar to an item holder. The model will be changed on this in the future. But you get this guy, and how to control him is use a stick for the moment because we haven't even finished programming a lot of the stuff. Uh, eventually, I would be putting a GUI on this, but you can do this. Right click on the side and you just control what speed you want to go at. Now this will be in meters of tick. The particles start off at 100 millimeters of tick, so 0.1. So every time you're going up you just increase by that and you determine how fast you want to go. Now right now it doesn't matter hugely what the speed is because you almost always get antimatter. The higher the speed the more antimatter you're likely to get. It is randomized so you'll never get a true dedicated amount. You will always at least get one at the end of it. So the speed doesn't matter tremendously for that, but higher speed equals better stuff. So that's kind of thing to plan for. You also do have to chunk load this whole thing. In the future, this will probably be set up so that you can unchunk load segments of it, but not the whole setup. So let's go ahead and get this running. And also, before I forget, let's power the magnets. These do have to be powered. I'm going to go ahead and slap cubes on the whole thing. You would obviously want to use wires or other things, so let's go ahead and do all this. And let's get it started. You want to shoot it through there? And you'll start to see it accelerate. So this will tell me how fast it's going. And you can see the entry speed is 100 millimeters a tick. Each one of these magnets will be boosting it by a certain amount as it goes through. We can show this by throwing a whole bunch of signs on there, but I'm not going to do that whole thing. But just kind of know that depending on the size of your magnets, how much you're going to boost. It is percentile based, so you do not get a continuous boost off it. It is also based on the amount of time the, the particle is in there. So the faster the particle is going, the less time it spends in the tube, the less boost it will receive. So there is actually a cap out point of how big the magnets are and how fast you can get the particles to actually transverse. But as they go around, 
and they continue to go around and around and around, they'll continue to get faster and faster and faster until you start to see them exit and actually start to collect antimatter that they're in. And hopefully we built this close enough. I'm going to assume we did, and I'm going to check this. We are not getting antimatter. One, two, three. We should be close enough. Just in case we're not, I'm going to go ahead and move this a little closer. A lot of the testing that's been done, I've actually had this almost directly on top of it. You can edit your tubes in real time. Just keep in mind you'll lose particles if you do. In the future, this may cause explosions, so you may die violently. Just know that. And if the sheep decides to go away, shoo, 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 shoo. We should be getting collisions now. It'd be really tragic if this broke at the last second. What actually might be happening is we might not be feeding it fast enough. I want to go ahead and break this and remove this until we get something in here that isn't lapis. Just so I can determine that it is actually putting the right item in there. Okay. Because one of the effects that these actually do have the advantage for, and you could use this as an item transportation system, is that if nothing is in there, it'll actually put the particle in there. Let me go ahead and break this. It is actually not colliding. This is very strange. Let's do it this way and just to get this working. Come on. I'm seeing it disappear, so yeah, we're getting anime. So there, there could be some finickiness between that, and that's definitely something that would need to be fixed eventually. But that's how to set it up. And as we go, I'll do more of these tutorials and kind of show you kind of how to build it a little better and better as we go. We have fun with this setup here. Like, literally do some crazy designs and send them to me. You know, like, I want to see how much you can do with this. Another cool thing you can also play around with this is that these do support splitting and merging. So if you want to have some really ridiculous designs, and say, for example, split and then merge back in. <coughs> that is entirely a doable thing. So have fun with it. Anyways, that's been uh, it for me. So 